رمضان يدنو يا سعادة خافقي يدنو لنا القرآن والإيمان نفحاته بركاته وروائح منه يبلغها لنا شعبا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير الخلق أجمعين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to this Ramadan series produced by the Muslim Association of Britain and Inspired Foundations who reach out and appeal to thousands of Muslims in order to create an awareness of the relationship between ourselves as individuals, our societies around us, and most importantly with our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This series is a seven-part series that is an extension of the daily Ramadan reminder. So throughout this series, we will be addressing a very important aspect of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that pertains to the worship of the heart, the status of the heart, and how we link and how we connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how we improve that status of attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the well-being of our souls, of our ruh, of our qalb, of our hearts. So welcome to this series, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this to accept our efforts, to make them sincere, and to elevate our status in this dunya and in the hereafter. So the first step is, if you find yourself having less hope in the mercy of Allah when you make a mistake, it essentially means that you are relying on your efforts, on your deeds, on your work, rather than on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that doesn't work. Our whole pursuit is for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our efforts and our deeds are for ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admits us to his pleasure and to his acceptance and to paradise by virtue of his subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam states in the authentic hadith addressing his sahaba, he says, no one, no one enters paradise by virtue of their deeds. However monumental, however huge, however enormous, however significant those deeds are, yet they are not what admit someone to paradise. The Sahaba were confused by this and they responded by asking the Prophet وسلم, Ya Rasulullah, not even yourself, not even you, we're talking about the Prophet and the Prophet responds, not even me, unless Allah covers me with the grace of his mercy. It is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we pursue. And therefore, if our hope in the mercy of Allah lessens simply because we have for some reason or another lessened our good deeds or maybe deserted them altogether or committed certain sins, it means that we rely more on our deeds than on the mercy and forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that should never be. So it also means that one should always be humble humble that he or she are graced by managing to commit good deeds, managing to read the Quran, managing to make hafiz, managing to stay up at night and pray, managing to make supplication. We should stay humble and not believe that because of all of this, that somehow we are higher or better or more enhanced or even closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than those who might appear to be committing sins. It is only by virtue of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are admitted to His grace and to His pleasure and to Jannatu Adl. The second step is that a human will, however strong, however powerful, however piercing it is, can never penetrate or uh, revoke uh, or pierce the universal laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this universe and created us within it according to certain laws and certain destinies, if you wish. 
And those destinies are true. And we must believe in them. And not only believe in them, but we must work in accordance to them. And we must, however powerful our will is, however hard we try, but we can never alter those laws of the universe. This shows us several things, including our place within the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us, but created us within this magnificent creation that is the universe around us. And we are only a part of that universe. The only thing that we stand apart in doing is that we are tasked with building and constructing and making better the situation and the conditions of this universe rather than to create havoc as humanity tends to do and especially like these days. So this is something that is incredibly important so that our hearts are truly attached and in the correct way with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must understand our place. We must understand our position and we must understand within which paradigm we sit and our obligations towards those in terms of our spiritual connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The rules of Allah overwhelm, the rules of Allah dominate. And however hard we try, those rules will overwhelm us and dominate us. And that's why we need to accept and to work within our place in terms of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within this vast creation. The third step, stop worrying, stop worrying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken care of everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is caring for you. Our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the infinite understanding and the unbound understanding that Allah cares for us. And if we look around us and we see that even those who disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even those who displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are cared for, looked after, fed, clothed, housed, sheltered, protected, given health, given the unbound, unlimited, infinite bounties that are all around us. So imagine if one's heart is sincerely attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what kind of care they are afforded by the most gracious, the most merciful. This allows us to relieve ourselves of the burdens that humanity is weighed down by. The burden of finding the next meal, the burden of worrying about illnesses and diseases, the burden of caring and being concerned about one's employment and whether they'll have a job or not, whether they'll have shelter or not, care for their children and young ones and the such, realizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cares for us, loves us, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for us. It relieves all of that burden from upon our shoulders so that we are true, we are committed, we are devoted and dedicated to pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That way our connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pure, is absolutely clear, is crystal. And that is how one elevates to being connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly, truly and absolutely. And that's what we seek, especially in this blessed month. The fourth step pertains to sincerity. Actions are meaningless unless they are infused with the spirit of sincerity. In virtually every major reference in Islamic, in the Islamic library, the very first line starts with the authentic hadith and the very well-known hadith, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ that actions are by the intentions attached to them. And that showed that even the greatest of the ulama wanted to remind themselves first and foremost before reminding those who will continue to read their writings until the day of judgment that it is sincerity. It is sincerity 
that actually deems this writing, this effort, as well as the effort of learning this ilm, this knowledge, it is by that sincerity that then all of that effort makes sense, that it accounts for something. My dear brothers and sisters, we commit so many actions, good, bad, somewhere in between, mundane, every single day of our lives. But imagine if every single one of those actions was attached to a devout connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a sincere connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a pledge that this action will not go to displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that it will be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Imagine those thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of actions that we do every single day, whether they be verbal or physical or heart linked, are all attached to the near, to the intention that these are sincere and for the sole purpose of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine those hundreds of thousands of acts of worship that you commit every single second of your life, including when you're sleeping, when you're resting, when you're entertaining your friends or your family, when you're doing the most mundane things like driving to work or having a conversation or settling a debt or a bill or whatever, all of these, because of the pledge that all of this is for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they all become acts of worship. And hence, our hearts become cleansed with that clarity of attachment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This Ramadan series comes to you courtesy of the Muslim Association Britain and Inspired Foundation, two magnificent organizations that represent thousands of British Muslims who aim to build better relations, not only with their surroundings and their society, but also and most importantly with their creator. So please do like, do subscribe, and also important to share with your loved ones. Thank you very much, Ramadan Mubarak.